been a few hours. This glue is most certainly dry. And we pop this out of the clampity clamps. Remove our calls. I'll probably just throw it here in the vise as solidly as I can here. Okay. And all we've got to do is just get this flush. The trouble is that it's angled so I can't use my normal things I'd like to do and I'm a little concerned about using a plane. I'm going to try the plane just a tiny bit here. But I have a feeling we're just going to have to spend some time with the old 80 grit gouge. Yeah, that's too, that's too violent for my liking. Um, i try the scraper, but I have a feeling that's not going to do me as well as I'd like either. It's not bad, but we got cross grain anyway, so we're just going to go after it with the old 80 grit gouge here. And just get close. And get it flattened. This won't take that long. This isn't so bad. So I'm just going to spend some time with some beautiful music and some sandpaper. There we are, polished to 12,000 grit as well, to match the fretboard. You get it at the right angles, they look, you look at it at weird angles and it looks like this is lighter, but it really isn't. It's just a camera trick. It's because of the tilt back angle or something. But in the playing position, when it's facing the audience, I guess, that's the best way I can put it, um, looks good. The polish came out good. The inlay looks fantastic. I am pleased. I may still throw a lacquer on this, um, then I'll probably have to rough this polish up, but it really only took 10 minutes maybe to polish, 15, 20 minutes maybe total. <clears throat> so I don't mind doing the polish. So now that we've got that done, um, there isn't much more to be done to the headstock or to the neck anymore. I think we're I'm going to do some minor little things, like there's a little ding here and here, there's a ding here. Um, I'll get everything really cleaned up, and then I think I need to work out what I'm going to do with the heel block. If I'm going to just leave it, and I may just leave it, it's fine. Um, it's too long right now. It sticks up a little higher than it should, so I'll figure out something to do with that too. So I think that'll be it, and then we can throw this thing on the body. Yeah, that looks really good can't see it very well but yeah that looks really good here let me zoom you out that looks pretty dang good it's got a good shine on it and there's chatoyance in that rosewood that's just beautiful just beautiful cool all right bring it back when i hit the next steps okay so we are set up now before we glue the neck to the body i want to get all the other pieces done to it that i can um, and one of those pieces is tuning machines going into the headstock and this one so far I've done this this will be the third time I've done this every time I do it I get stuck on how to make sure they're aligned and all of that stuff so these Grover tuners are really handy they've got a they got a nice flat spot along the top so what I do I think that I will do is I will put them in like so and then I'll take this short straight edge and just butt them up against each other butt it up against there and get everything dialed in so that they are parallel to each other and what that really does is it gets them perpendicular to the center line and I think that method should take care of getting them at the very least equally distanced um, I can't get this in here with that on it but what I figure that'll get them so that they're all parallel um, what I should do though is make sure that I can so this thing is the thing about this whole process is that it takes eight hands. Maybe I'll do that with a quick grip instead, then I can quick grip in different locations. Oh, what I've got here, while I have this apart now, is my original template with a bit of neoprene and a couple of holes so that it protects that polished surface, because, you know, I polished a little soon, probably too soon. Let me grab a quick grip here real, sec real quick. 
So we've got, and that just spaces everything up so that the machines can poke through the top. Um, and I'm just going to get a grip on it, just a light grip. Just enough, because that's, that's really plenty to hold it there. It's not going any, I don't need it very sturdy. I just need it to not fall over. But that lets me get the second straight edge in. Or the second set in with the straight edge here. So we'll get it close. And it's just a matter of rotating until they are straight with each other. And I'm going to try to get them, I'm doing a dry fit basically here. So I'm going to try to get them all in. These third ones are going to be tricky because I don't have anywhere to really hold on to this thing properly and get the straight edge in. I wonder if I can do it standing up not very well. Not as good. Not as well as I'd like. Actually, that's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. I just moved one, so we'll find out. Yeah, that's good. We can do it that way. That'll do just fine. Yeah, okay, so that would be with them in there perfectly parallel to each other. Um, I do like the spacing that gives me. Um, it feels like they should be rotated some, but maybe not. No, I think straight is good. I wish I could freaking... I think I'm going to go find out about that before I do this, but that would have them all straight this way. I'm pretty sure that's right. I'm going to go double check that because honestly this is my one shot to do it, so let's find out. Okay, well, <laughs> after falling down a little rabbit hole on the internet, it seems you turn them however you want, whatever you like. So I'm going to take a peek at them turned even like this, and then I'll pop it off the, the clamping system here. How are you? And just give it a look. See if I like how that looks. I think I do like how that looks. I think that looks just fine. Okay, so we will go with straight. I was hoping to go with straight because that's more systematic for my brains anyway, so. All right, so now, with that in, I could put the nuts and things on now, but what I'm gonna do instead, I think what I'll do instead, let's see, hold on. Get a nice light grip on that again. And we'll see here. That looks pretty good to me. It is pretty easy for them to twist on me, so what I think I might want to do. I'm trying to decide whether to put the nuts and things on it first. Um, I think, no, I think I'll just go with this. Locate my little mini hammer. And I've got a, a um, transfer punch that is the size of this hole. And I'm just going to very lightly make a mark where I want that hole to be drilled. And then I'm going to do another real quick double check. Make sure we are still squared up here. Yeah, that looks good to me. And just making sure that doing this does not actually cause them to twist on me. Because the, the point of this could try to follow the grain. That's pretty good. first and it looks like we've got those marked nicely as it is so now we can pull them all out oh yeah those are well marked more than well marked okay I'm gonna take this out I'm gonna get a sturdier block here and I hold fast because that held a lot better and uh, this will let me here. This will let me hold it a lot better while I drill. Okay. 
That ain't going anywhere now. I'll get my drill and my small bit. I got a little 16th inch drill bit. A little bit. And I'm going to take and grab it in the chuck here. And then I'll stick some tape on it to, to choose my final depth of the drill. Just make our little depth stop here. If we can hang on to the tape properly here. We'll go down about uh, 5 sixteenths or so of an inch. Wow, that tape is too big. Okay, we'll go like that. We'll go down just a bit over a quarter is fine. That should be plenty deep enough for the the task. And so here we go. Okay, well that's that's a pretty big step all on its own, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Oop, no, those are all one side. This one's over here. I got them all turned around. Okay, now I can take my little tiny screwdriver. Double check all of our holes line up. I'm putting them over the holes to make sure everything does align the way I'm hoping for. They do still look good, good. We'll get our packet of hardware, and we're going to use our brains today, as opposed to most days. And uh, I'm going to spill this into the into the case here. Let's see this down here. There we go. Actually, I think I'll spill everything into the case, and then I'll move. I'll switch this to this thing because I'll use this straight edge in a bit. So we got our bushings. And we've got our washers that all go on the top surface. And we've got our screws. So I'm going to go grab a tiny screwdriver for this task, and we'll uh, bring you right back here in just a second. All right, we got all our hardware set up. We've got a bit of wax, a couple of screwdrivers. We'll just take our screw and wax it a little bit so we get a nice, good, easy drive. Just slide it on in there. Just try not to force it. It's the main thing. Okay. I got a little bit of... No, I've got no wiggle. That's good. It's a good thing we got those holes right where they belong then. Try not to uh, cam out too badly. This is why we're waxing. Is I don't want to tear up the head of this if I can avoid that. Okay. Visually, they look pretty darn good. This one looks a tiny bit tweaked. But now we can pop it out. look at the front side here. That looks pretty good. Trying to, I'm getting a visual of it full on in the front. Looks pretty nice, I think. I can live with this. This looks pretty good. Looks pretty good, I says. So we're gonna call that good. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the bushings in now. So let's see if I can pop a washer on there. These washers have a pretty face and a not so pretty face. So I'll just try to get them close to the final appearance. Put the pretty face out. And uh, we can call the tuning machines pretty much mounted. I'm going to end up taking them off when I put the finish on anyways. But that is pretty good. I am quite pleased. Flip it. And put this one on. And this is mostly a photo op here, and also just to make sure I get everything aligned. It's always good to do the
whole hardware bit so you can see if you're missing anything too. Luckily, I am not. Not luckily. Not that's not luck. That's how it's supposed to be. And everything goes on. So there's tuning machines. That came out nice. That came out real nice. I like it. All right. Next step's coming up. All right. I think we're ready for one last thing. We got the tuning machines in, and all that hardware is drilled and ready to go. The frets are flushed. Neck is shaped. The only thing I think left is this heel block. And right now it's oversized, which is good. Um, I've got a clamping block here taped to this. Um, and I'm going to, looks like we've got a little bit of nub there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to f f set it a little bit and then I'll take, it's hard because there's a lot of clamps that are necessary here. And I'm going to try not to do any damage while I'm doing this. Hold another call here without blocking my path. Okay, that's working. Okay, so I'm just clamped it on just, just enough to get it flush where I want it. Yep, that's working. And now I'm looking at where the heel block ends here. Because that's basically going to be where it gets glued. Um, you can kind of see right now it's essentially flush and I can come down a bit and so what I'll do is I'm going to take a pinzal and I'm going to mark this but I want to move my clamps just a little bit here I want to get a little bit more pressure in the center because it's not quite seating here where I'd like it to just a little tighter grip there we go yeah that's good all right so that's as tight as it's going to get and what I'll do, yeah, that worked out really well, actually. That is really good. Okay. And then I can come in here with the seam. And just a couple of good clamps right there to hold it down to the fretboard, to the body. That'll do. Put a, a block across, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just getting a fitment check and I gotta work out where I want the heel block to end on this thing. And so what I'll do is I'll just take my sharpest pencil and about 80% of the binding I'd say, I'll mark it. I'll mark, I'll show you this mark here. Actually I'm gonna do it right around the maple because then I could do, in fact, let's do that. I just had an idea. I think what I'll do is I'll make a, I will make a overlay that is this maple and a rosewood plate to go over the top. And that will hopefully make the rosewood and the, hopefully the maple and the, maple, hopefully the line for the maple lines up with the binding maple, the ma binding, the maple on the binding. He's giving myself a little extra challenge here to make sure I get that right. So, But that is now squared off. That is marked where I want to cut. So I just got to take about a quarter inch of, off, the, off the heel block. So that's what I will do next. We are ready to pop this off one last time. And I'm going to make this cut, but not worry about gluing the, pl the block on the cover until, oh no, I want to get it flush, so maybe I will do it sooner. Yeah, I'll probably do it sooner. Um, but we basically have, I'll come around here and show you. So I've put a line, you can probably the focus to see it, see that line there, and there's a, an equal, equal line there. I'll just slice this off one way or another. I haven't decided how just yet. Probably slowly with a plane, maybe, we'll see. Um, when I figure out how, I'll do that and I'll show you. Hold on one sec. All right, I'm over here with my famous plane from Dave. It's a little aggressive and it's tearing because the grain direction on this is wonky. So I'm going to go very close to the line but not fully to it and I'll file the rest of the way. 
because this grain is, yeah, we're within 30 second on either side here now. Mm. Just trying to get a nice flat surface. Okay. And then I'm going to come back after this now. You know what? I'm not even going to bother finally. I'm just 80 grit gouge this stuff nice and smooth across the top. Try to get it as even as I can here. And I'm doing a lot of this just sort of by eye. And I am tilting this a little bit because I kind of want it tilted just a tiny bit. <sighs> okay, so that's tilted nice. I'm going to grab a file now because I think I can keep it flatter. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see if I can keep it flatter. That's going to be noisy. But necessary. Yeah, this is flatter for sure. Try to get a nice flat surface. I need to take the pencil lines now. They're still there right now, so I'm, I'm good. Boy, that's a good sound, isn't it? Any better going the other way? It does. Well, now I'm in your way, aren't I? This won't take long though, so okay, one sec. I'll be right back when I get that flat. Alright, so that is now flat and exactly where I want it, and the length or the size I want it. Got a scrap of headstock plate, which is about a hundred thou thick in rosewood, and I'm just gonna find a convenient location that looks nice and mark where it sits roughly and I'll cut out a bit of that on the bandsaw that I can get glued to this bit of maple which will match the maple that is on the uh, binding so I'll cut this out on the bandsaw and I'll be right back all right, so we'll rub it off with some acetone, the rosewood here, so it's clear. Might as well just wipe the acetone right onto that. That's smart. Duh. Uh, da -da -da, let it flash. Throw a little glue on. This isn't going to be a big high-impact joint, so it's not a big deal. Just smear it on. No need for a brush, I don't think. But I do want good coverage, so I'm going to... Give it one more quick lop to ensure that I have some squeeze out here. Okay, then I'm just gonna drop it on the floor, get it covered in sawdust. No, nope, it didn't. Good. Try it again. My fingers took hold. Okay. Now, put the clamp on it here. I'm just gonna try to get as much of the clamp coverage as I can here. Give it what fur. Okay, let that chooch, and then I'll cut it out one last time for that. Um, you know what, I'm gonna go grab a knife and I'll just cut this slab free, and then we'll deal with it. So, all right, we'll bring you back when the glue's dried. All right, this glue is more than likely dry. Hopefully, I got enough coverage. Oh good, it's stuck to the bench. Should have had enough to cover everything oh yeah lots of lots of extra good now it's just a matter of applying it to this and then I'll get it smoothed so we'll do some glue on this here um, I've already got a call here that would work just fine if I could just uh, move it on up set it right there and then I can take this little guy 
think we can use this guy to, to put it on there. Yes, I do. Yeah, that should work if I can keep it placed. Okay, a little more glue. Um, I'm going to take that off. That amount should be plenty. I'm trying to reduce the squeeze out problems of having to go in too far. That should do it. Now just try to get it to stick to itself properly here. Make sure I've got overhang on all four sides all the way around it. Looks alright. Oh, we got lots of room over here. Okay, I'm just trying to keep it from sliding around too much. Making sure the grain direction is nice. And put the squeeze on her. Yeah, it's moving around a little bit, so let's double check. Everything look good there, everything looks good there, everything looks good over here, everything looks good oh, there. Would like to be back here a bit though. Now, how are we doing? Looks good. Looks a good. Okay. Sitch down on it nice. Not going anywhere. That's good. It's not moving around. It's well seated. A couple more hours, let that dry, and then I'll come back in and uh, ferret. Okay, it's been a little while, and I'm dropping stuff on the ground here. It's been a little while. This glue is dry, and uh, it is on there pretty good. So now we just have to flush it up. To do that, I think it's just going to be wisest to go slow and methodical. I do want to, I do want to uh, get after it with a saw here, cut off some of that excess. Let's see if I can. I wonder if my small, where is that saw? My little Japanese saw can handle that. Let's find out. Shoulder. If this wouldn't work, I could use my fret saw as well, my, my, like a coping saw. This seems like it'll work though, if I can hold it straightly. Try not to uh, wreck nothing. Just trying to spare myself some filing time here. And it looks like we're going to bevel that because I just cut back far enough to need to. I had planned on beveling anyways, but maybe not quite that much. Just trying to get the... got to be careful. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna probably pillow the top of this a bit, I think is the plan. Try to do this without destroying anything if I can help it. Also try not to get anything too uh, messy there. Um, I think I'm going to leave a lot of that for the, for the filing. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to sort of back bevel that a bit, just so that it's a little flusher than... I have like six teeth engaging here. But I don't want it to cut the wrong direction. I want it to be very clearly flush here. We'll take our time. Keep enough teeth engaged so that this actually functions. 
Ooh, damn. I cut into the mahogany. Crap. That is going to leave a gap. Frick. Frick! That's what I get for being impatient. Frick! We'll have to... I'm going to get it flush. I may have to... I may have to refit the neck a little bit. Damn it. Damn it. That sucks. That... I should have been more careful. But I'm going to get it flush, and then we'll see just how much that really hurts me. Because flushing this won't take too long. I'm going to grab a 80 grit gouge here. Because that file was a bit aggressive. That's fine. It's because I'm going uphill. Yay, much better this way. So we're going to try, I hope I can salvage that, god that was bad, I hope it's alright, we'll find out, I won't know until I get it, I guess I can try it now, and see what kind of a mess it made, and whether or not I can fill it, maybe I can fill it with some sawdust, I don't know, yeah we should check, it. god you should see what I did here, got impatient, see that little dink right there, that's the saw blade, that cut into, I don't know if you can see that there's a little ledge here now, that cut into my heel badly, and I am not happy about that at all. But I'm going to stick it on the body and we'll see what happens. I'm going to put it on the body and see how it, how terrible it looks. You should be able to tell pretty easily here. Oh yeah, that's way the frick off. God. Ugh. Yeah, that's a pretty good screw up. Well done. Pretty good. Pretty good screw up. Well, the good side of well, no, there is no good side of that. So let's, since I've got it sort of flush on this side, we'll check my theory because right now I'm pretty sure I've lost the cool idea of the maple being flush with the, with the top of the, the binding. Oh God, that is perfect. Oh, man. Oh, that's really too bad. God, that lined up beautifully. Alright. Um, well, I have mahogany to repair. First and foremost. God, that sucks a lot. That's really bad. Hang on, let me show you what I've got. So, firstly... That line is incredible. That line is exactly what I was aiming for, and I think I could have nailed it. However, if you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see, there's a notch. Hold on, let me give you the majority of the screen here. See that little tick down in there where the mahogany doesn't touch? That's the beginning of my problem. See that little diagonal that the, see that little diagonal? Yeah, that's, that's where all the hell and the pain hurts right now because I got impatient. Um, can I just fix that mahogany bit? Let's see. Let's take this. So the first thought I have right now is maybe I can let me put the body away here. Maybe I can peel this thing off and make a new one and fix that mahogany bit so that things are back to flush with a small shim. I think I'm going to give that a go. Um, I think I need to do this after I've had some time to calm down because it is an evening time and yeah, that I kind of screwed up. Damn it. That was just impatience too. All I had to do was stop and look and I didn't. So lessons learned. Slow down. I'll fix that. 
fix it somehow. We'll see. Anywho, bring you back later.